Yeah, welcome everyone. Um, you've so you've had spent, I think, most of you two days uh, with perspectives from different researchers, artists, and developers of digital technologies. And I hope you are all uh, inspired by this point and have met people that whom you would like to collaborate with. Welcome also to the students from Poland who are joining you and maybe also some other people on Facebook have found their way uh, to this discussion um, of the conference Music Media Arts Education. Um, I think that in the past days uh, or in the past sessions, uh, they were mostly about uh, presenting projects current projects that are running, findings uh, of research and so on. And with this closing panel of the conference, we would like to take a look uh, a little bit towards the future. Um, what uh, are recommendations for the development of music education as next steps, but maybe also in the longer term? Um, addressing questions like um, what are possibilities that digital instruments offer and how can music education use those possibilities? What kinds of arts education does digital music practice require? And also we'd like to take uh, to talk a bit about uh, digital tools as medium in the learning process. A question that um, probably for uh, most of you the pandemic last month have brought to the foreground and um, it would be also interesting to uh, talk a little bit about what we can maybe also learn from this time to take into the future of arts education and we would like to discuss this also in the context uh, in the different regional contexts that we have um, uh, in this conference um, in France, Poland, and Germany. And I look very much forward to discussing all um, those topics with, and maybe the panelists can already uh, also now switch on their videos so that, um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so, um, I look forward to discussing this uh, with Katinka Dumitrascu, who is head of outreach and education at the Grame Center, exploratory, exploratory music resource and activity generator at the National Music Creation Center in Lyon, France. Uh, then Marek Hovoniewski, composer, sound artist, uh, director of the Electro Acoustic Music Studio at the Academy of Music in Krakow. And uh, the he is also the director of uh, the Audiosphere Lab, Intermedia Department at the Fine Arts Academy in Krakow. And um, also one of his projects is the Audio Arts Festival that is running at the moment. Welcome. And um, then we have uh, Professor Andreas lehmann Wermser. Um, who is a professor at the Institute for Music Education Research at the Hanover University of Music, Drama and Media. And um, Andreas leads the research project Musicalytics on musical non-formal learning in digital environment and is um, joining us from Hanover in Germany. Welcome everyone. Um, it's a lot of questions uh, for one hour. And also we would like to um, take questions and give the opportunity for the audience to come in. So um, if you have comments or questions, um, I'd like to ask you to directly, when they come up, write them in the chat, either in Zoom or Facebook, and then we can take them on from there in the process. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nice to have you all here. Um, I, in the first round, um, I would la like to um, give you all the opportunity to expand a little bit on your intro on, on the introduction. And um, so we can, if we want to look into the future that we understand where you are all coming from and where you're all looking from into the future. And um, I would like to start with uh, Katinka. Could you uh, briefly give us a background on Grame? and also tell us what your um, current approach and interest 
in music education is as the head of education as the center and maybe already thinking a little bit in the direction of the topic of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adria. And first of all, I would like to say how, how thrilled I am to participate to this conference. So many thanks for having me. Um, actually, yes, I am head of the outreach and education department of GRAM, National Center for Music Creation in Lyon. For those uh, unfamiliar with our activities, we are one of the eight national centers for music creation in France. This uh, label was created by the French Ministry of Culture in the late 90s, and it, uh, it aims to encourage the conception and dissemination of new musical works. So basically, Gram offers residency opportunities for composers, performers, artists of various disciplines, but also conducts scientific research in the field of uh, digital technologies and computer music. Our research team has uh, an expertise in the field of real-time uh, music and audio programming languages. So briefly to sum up, we focused on, on contemporary music and digital instruments for the stage, but we ask ourselves a lot of questions about what these new digital instruments really bring to the audience and their ability or not to, to offer a new musical experience. So. Um, our educational project explore maybe new ways of writing or of performing, of living music, using these new tools as quite of amplifiers of imagination. I guess the amplification of kids' imagination and their fantasy is really a major issue for me and, and for Graham. Uh, we conduct uh, artistic and scientific activities to, to offer them uh, workshop and, and projects that allow them to put themselves in the shoes of today's artists, designers or performers. And for this, Gram has the, the chance really to develop its own tools, thanks to our scientific research team. Um, so these tools are built to adapt both to the professional world for musicians of today and tomorrow, and for the general public with no or little musical knowledge. So I'm speaking to you today, maybe with the, the will of answering one of the questions that was actually posted on the mural, uh, that is, what kind of meaningful content can we create with digital tools in the context of uh, an oversaturated digital world? And this for the categories I mentioned before, for, for the pros or the pros to be and for the general public. So this will be my perspective and maybe less the one of, uh, of the online education and how to develop tools to make it more effective. I, I guess I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to Andreas for this subject, uh, but it is not really my field of expertise, but um, that is it. I will not be much longer, if it's okay. Sure, thank you, Katinka. And we will get back on the question oh, you're asking and so we can elaborate more on this. Um, just to do the first round, um, I would like to move over to Andreas. Um, you're leading the Musicalytics project. And uh, as this is also part of kind of the whole like broader uh, research um, uh, environment that is being presented at this conference, I would li like to ask you specifically about this. If you could give us a, a brief overview and some learnings from the project that you feel would be interesting to discuss in this in session. In Germany and I guess worldwide, uh digital media are kind of hyped in music education. And of course they have a huge potential. However, <laughs> excuse me, however, we were interested what exactly happens when children or adults uh, learn about music using digital media. Um, being a long-term teacher, I'm very interested in the processes kind of on, on the micro level. What we did was we installed classes in music in adult evening courses at a, um, a non-formal institution called Volkshochschule. And the participants uh, got tablets uh, that were donated by the ministry and were about to learn 
on songwriting using whatever apps they wanted to use. And what we did was that we cooperated with uh, scientists in information technology from the University of Bremen uh, because we tried to track uh, what exactly are they doing in class and what are they doing outside of class. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details. It's just that we got about 1300 gigabyte of data on what they did in the meantime. And, um, and part of the project is to automatically evaluate those data. But you are asking for the results. And of course, that's the interesting thing. One thing is um, the, the hype about digital media and music education is partly on it, it allows equal access to everyone. And what we found out is it, that's not really true. It is, as we have all learned during the pandemic, it's the better educated ones who can make better use of digital media and online classes, online courses. Uh, very much the same with us. That was before the pandemic, but still the people that were familiar with digital media, the people who were well familiar with music, they could make the best use of all the, uh, the stuff we offered. Uh, it seems that there is is needed a, a minimum level on pre knowledge to to really make best use of it, and um, that knowledge might refrain refer to IT competencies, competencies in music, or a combination of both, and. Um, that, of course, uh, sheds a little bit different light on, on the potential and it calls for a, a very conscious dealing with that potential. Although I'm not doubting that, that there is much use, for instance, if you think about people with special needs and everything, uh, that is very helpful and a huge potential, but it's not, uh, it's not given automatically, it needs careful consideration. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and we will also get back to this uh, in the discussion. Um, Marek, uh, you have a very wide ranging artistic and educational practice and also with the Audio Arts Festival, and I'd be curious um, to know what you are currently interested in or what excites you, for example, when students come to you with a proposal or a project or you, you, are, ex you are selecting something for your festival. Like, where do you see like current potential like on the, on the artistic field? Because you come in like from, from an arts and kind of higher education perspective and I'd be curious what what you find interesting there and then maybe also how you see your educational role in in this context uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me i'm i'm very happy to be here in uh, in part of the panel because it's quite intensive uh, conference i'm very sorry that i was not able to to join the other uh, panels but as as you mentioned uh, as you julia mentioned also um, we are inside our audio art festival so one of the main events running uh, already for 27 years this is this year is 28 and of course it's uh, with some obstacles with the, the limits but we know about so in 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 fact we stream our festival since 2000 the first streams was were audio so um, by paradox we are in a quite kind of natural environment uh, still but of course we 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 can discuss about uh, advantages and um, and traps and and uh, problems which occurred uh, uh, very much and quite clearly on the beginning of the uh, pandemic times uh, uh, thank you for for introducing me introducing me but uh, because i'm i'm uh, connected with uh, three schools in fact uh, two schools in Kraków. so 
No, 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 no problem, no problem. The Academy of Music in Krakow is my host. The, the Fine Arts Academy and the Intermedia Department is the second one. The third one is Chopin University, Music University in Warsaw. I, I teach the, in the Sound Engineering Department. So, in fact, there are three different fields mixed up uh, together. And they are mixed up in a special way uh, inside the Audio Art Festival, but also in a series of meetings which we uh, initiated in 2012 called Group Lab. The group uh, was an uh, initiative by my students. They found out that they have a regular classes, so we have a regular education in, on a schedule, but they need some other form of education, more informal, but also more open for all topics which can be mixed or can be merged together. So that's how how we started every week regular meetings on Wednesday at eight o'clock. So we are, we have a meetings since 2012 every Wednesday. The the cycle and this regu regular regular uh, uh, structure is extremely important, not only for regular education, no matter whether this is short or long term education, but it's also quite important for this kind of. Uh, uh, activity which is in between. So in fact, uh, uh, we have a series of, uh, of uh, uh, three impro sessions initiated in 2015, which are regularly uh, synchronized with the group meeting. And we, uh, that's quite important because we are open to everybody. So, so this is the, the, the really important element of, of the meeting that when we start, uh, uh, making music, but also start our experiments in sound art, we don't uh, deal with professional, non-professional amateurs. We even don't call ourselves like this, you know. So we have a lot of models when, when everybody can join in form of uh, uh, common performances, but also in, in, uh, in uh, the graphics course uh, creation and, um, and mainly using all digital instruments which are around us because we are, uh, we are interconnected with the technology for a long time. So the, to, to assign that this is a special digital technology, it's important, but in the same time, we are making a lot of mixed up things with the low tech technology, mechanical constructions and design, and what is quite important in a sound art activity. So for example, tomorrow we have a concert called group lab invites and it's open to everyone so we we have a meeting half past uh, seven just for the zoom sound and possible video check and then we start with certain conducting so i'm controlling people a little bit during this uh, during the those kind of performances we have today, uh, because today is Wednesday, so we have today our regular meeting at, at uh, four o'clock. So that's one, one idea which is quite, uh, quite important in, in joining different uh, people, not only students, but uh, students are, are quite important because uh, it is located inside the structure of the high uh, education. So uh, I think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's one point. Another point with the digital era is to work with the archive. When you look at the, at the, at the program of the, of the festival, we run the project called Time Machine of Musica Centrum. Musica Centrum is another society which I founded in 77, 1977. So we played over 1000 concerts, uh, 35 members at the moment. We are performers of contemporary music uh, and, uh, and we uh, performed with ourselves from the past. That was the, that was the idea. So dealing with the, with the time uh, 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 sector, 
time vector, time uh, range, and using the historical archives is extremely important in, in our art uh, activity. So you, you you can make a check later on because that's a there's a there's a machine which rotates and we are choosing different elements and we can play with with those uh, elements from the past. That's very important to make those things uh, still be alive. That's that's what is one of the one of the goal for time machine of of Musica Centrum, the, the event which we just produced uh, last Sunday. Uh, I think I, I I I think I can stop now because I think that I can talk and talk, but but I think that that was like a like a main uh, introduction and and uh, let's let's check the others. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marek, for this uh, introduction. Um, there are already questions in the chat coming in. I will first. Um, uh, I think go to the questions that you have brought up and I would like to start uh, with uh, Andreas's question <laughs> about um, I think there are there are two um, two uh, aspects to one is the, the the question of I will I think I would like to start with the question of access and also previous like with how do you come uh, to the learning um, uh, environment. Um, what is your background? We, like, and because um, this also links to something that was discussed this morning, which I took a note of. This is why it directly like uh, rang a bell here for me, where it was uh, in the morning, it was more about um, uh, how learners understanding of like students understanding of handling digital music tools depended in the research of that was presented in the morning on their previous knowledge. So uh, it was about uh, the, the metaphors that digital tools bring with them and if they resemble traditional instruments, those who already can play a traditional instruments were kind of easier to adapt to those instruments. And there was also one uh, project that had um, uh, that reported that um, the students that had no previous music experience were much more open to using digital tools, for example. And those that had already a training were not so open uh, to work with the digital tools. This was also one project. And um, I think this is maybe actually a question to all of you because <laughs> and, um, how how do you see this in your in your different uh, in your with your different backgrounds um, the the influence of of this like um, the access to do both like digital instruments but also to digital learning environments and and um, maybe start with Andreas uh, because you you brought up the point uh, in your presentation that you wanted to discuss about it. Um, like how to kind of nuance or like take into account the background that that the students bring with them to to the learning process. And our data, it's a little bit different from what you reported from this morning. It's uh, we found that the people who did have experiences with music before uh, were more um could could ma make more nuanced use of the um of the possibilities they have um but the question of um of digital media is really very complex and and i think that relates very much to what katinka and marek said um what are we actually doing with digital media with apps uh, are we simply reproducing popular music with very little creative elements in it? Uh, or are we looking for more, uh, for new sounds, for new patterns? Um, and even, I mean, I'm not making up here the, the construction of high art versus low art. It's, it's a question of something new in any, in any way. And um, yesterday we had, I have a class right now on apps and music lessons. And we had online Johannes Ismail, uh, cultural scientists who 
elaborated on drum machines. And he said it's a very paradox uh, thing that the older the machines are, the more futuristic their sound is because they don't even pretend to make natural sounds. They just do something new. While by now, uh, because you can sample natural sounds and you can process them very easily, you are closer to the real or the known, but at the same time less futuristic. And I found that a very interesting observation he made there. Um, I think this also already leads to, um, or, may, or did you want to um, directly react to the question I, I asked about background? Sorry, I, I was already thinking ahead, but I want to give you. <laughs> um, Maybe it's also Katinka, because I think you are dealing with, I think when we spoke before the panel, you said you work with um, students also who have no previous experience and um, yeah. and, and you, what can digital tools bring, yeah. What I wanted to say that is maybe basically uh, in France, in Gram, we have two, two approaches for for a common goal i will say but so one hand on the one hand we develop repertory and in the same time we use the the new pieces and new tools for new perspective for transmission and for education projects so for me these two dimension the the, the repertory and the transmission dimension are totally complementary uh, and and this is uh, how it is in the history of occidental music uh, for, for ages. So we have always a composer with uh, his dreams, his visions. We have an instrument or now an interface which collects these dreams. And, and we have the need to transmit the, this, uh, to, pass, to pass the ideas and emotions to audience or to next generation. So I think uh, the, 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 the creating process uh, is never totally disconnected for, for a form of transmission. So maybe art, I, I know that it, it is a, a current debate, and uh, uh, but I, I guess from my point of view, the whole sense, the whole purpose of, of art is to to help us to to help us think, to help us see, to help us make uh, links. So. Uh, nowadays, we develop machines that hear and that uh, transform sounds better uh, than we do. So we, uh, it, but this makes sense, in my opinion, uh, only if this forces us in a way to to reconsider us as as uh, performers or as pedagogues, as composers or as creators. So. Um, I guess it's the same with a traditional instrument. Uh, trying to play faster or louder, it makes no sense in itself. So I guess any interface, old or new, uh, has to be like a magnifying glass of our intentions and intuitions. But what I would like to, to add is that I guess that nowadays the work on sound is quite a common thing. We, we uh, we control sound, we control any aspect of the sound, any parameters, so everything is very controlled. But I guess this, this approach has maybe disconnected us paradoxically from sound itself because the, the, the relationship we have with sound is always passing through extremely sophisticated machines and powerful machines that hear much more that our ears can hear. So. I'm working with a, a great musician and pedagogue in Lyon in the National Conservatory uh, who, who said something very interesting uh, to me and I, I noted it. So uh, it said that when we do not hear well enough, our reflex is to turn up the sound. So, but it should be the other way around. We should go to the sound. Uh, we should uh, have this proximity and, and we should not let the machine deal with it. So. Um, so I guess this uh, this leads a, a little bit to a first to give a first answer to 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 my question is I guess these new apps or these new interfaces um, should um, should how I how to say make us um, 
learn to listen again, to listen to the fragility of sound, to listen to, uh, and this is very, for me, it is crucial, not only for musicians, for everybody. So in Gram, this was our big challenge to, to try to recreate the, the condition of, of the discovery of sound. If not make it magic, make it attractive. So we had this, um, we had three instruments. I, I've posted some videos on the mural. You can, you can go and see this kind of instrument. It's uh, the smart Faust technology, the light wall system, or, or a new one, a new instrument called the gramophone. So. Um, I guess all these interfaces um, are using a, a vocabulary, a hybrid vocabulary. It's not quite the musician vocabulary, not quite the dancer vocabulary, a hybrid one, but um, it forced us to rethink the, the, the pedagogical framework of, the, of our projects, the place of the teacher, the place of the student, um, but also a new approach to sound, a more instinct, uh, instinctive approach to sound. So. Um, I guess I, I hear what uh, Andreas is saying, but I, I, in Gram, we wanted that technical aspects are put uh, let, left aside and we reconsider uh, the sound by its intuitive nature. I know if I'm, if I, if I, you know what I mean. I would like to join this aspect because uh, Katinka mentioned about the extremely important part uh, of our environment. I mean, uh, on the, usually on the one of my first classes, we talk about our senses, about mm -hmm. eyes and ears. And then I make the experiment, which is part of the active listening co concept invented by Paulina Oliveros, but also by, by many other uh, sound artists. Uh, so we 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 are now in closed spaces in rooms mostly. So one of the experiment is to to start from the silence, yeah. just nothing. When we stop talking, when we really start to turn to the really basic concentration of our yeah. environment, yeah. then we can really stop. Forget about digital you know, yeah. <laughs> era and forget about the the instrument on all devices because I you know the most natural device is our voice so that's that's that yeah. the second step in fact but when we start from the silence when we start we can really start to learn again about listening how we listen and what we hear because those two elements are extremely yeah. important and connected. So then slowly we are standing up, we go to the window, <laughs> I go to the window now, we open it but very slowly and what you hear is the message. Mm. So we are opening very slowly and usually I I ask them for like five minutes session to listen and to remember what they've got. And then we talk about, we are exchanging our recent experiences with all those sounds we are coming to us because we are sitting in different places. But try to imagine how does it work in a regular class? We are inside, inside one room, so those sounds should be common, but they are not. But because the reception process is very personal, so those elements are extremely important. When we are experienced with that, then we take a piece of paper and I ask them to draw, to make some drawing no matter what kind of notation they are using. Mm. So it's also extremely interesting to find out how students are working with that. And believe me that you can use this method with the children, yeah. with adults, with professionals. Sometimes it's more difficult with professionals, to be honest, you know, uh, because um, they're mostly ready. And this is the, the, the small difference. But 
that's extremely important for me. That's one of the basic exercise and basic practicing to open our ears and to open our mind. Because then when we are taking the instruments again, the instrument became something really different. Then you can, you can really focus on a sound, not the sound, which is just the result of the note of the yeah. score because that's one of the basic misunderstanding in the musical education that we are learning the music from the notes playing them on instruments okay and in many cases when i ask them just to show me what the instrument about many of my students are asking me for the notes for the score the score is the goal the score is the is the main material they are dealing with so i think that this this kind of uh, experience is extremely important and uh, as i said we are starting from our main senses what we hear yeah. what we see what we remember how we can evaluate those information in our mind but later to the paper in form of different uh, notation as score which is which is another score okay and then we come to other exercises, but that's that's uh, because then we go to the blind walks. We are going to, to explore spaces to exchange those uh, experiences. But now, especially when we are in, in a pandemic time, we are closed in a rooms, you know, mm. like a cage a little bit. We are in a boxes with the sound limited. So to open the window for example is extremely important. Of course, the, another story is just to go for a walk and then to to make what another I, experience. What I wanted to add bit, also, I don't know. Katinka, if, can yeah. briefly, Andreas is already raising his hand. It's quite bold to in your car. <laughs> yeah, I just want to keep the order a little bit. Yeah, of course. Andreas? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's something very interesting in what Marek just uh, reported because here we sit discussing make and learning music in the age of digitalization and he's talking about the senses and which is nothing else but the body yeah. uh, and not digital instruments and he's also talking about you were you're talking about what people remember which is nothing else but making meaning of adjusting meaning to something and I think that's very important. It refers to old music, whether it is uh, traditional music on traditional instruments or whether we call, whether we talk about digital uh, media and the music you can make with them or the sounds that you can produce with them. Uh, you also have to uh, take into respect what's the meaning that's transported by them. Very, very often digital media uh, transport traditional Western Europe, Western culture with them by the by the sounds that they offer, by the names that they give to the platform, and and oftentimes they disregard the importance of the body in making music. Uh, I watched a, a promotion video for for. A, a digital platform that was talking about cooperation and um, you saw actually very little interaction between different people using the digital media and that is I think a, a fundamental uh, difference to um, to other other ways of producing music if you look at any blues band or rock and roll band there's a lot of physical action going along. If you look at a classical concert or a singer on opera stage, and it has always taken to be into respect. Sorry, Katinka. No, no. <laughs> I wanted to add that maybe um, I totally agree. And I, I, I guess I, for me, a good technology is the one that offers um, a framework we're not not constrained, not formatted interfaces, but on the contrary, to help us return to our senses and our first sound intuition. That is a good technology to 
uh, 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 but what I wanted to add is that uh, an advantage maybe of if the tools, digital tools are really uh, well made, um, they have the advantage that they do not have history or tradition or school or, or, or a previous defined framework. The, the teacher and the student uh, find themselves in, in, uh, in the same place with the same instrument. And uh, I guess, we are here in the presence of a really um, ideal framework, uh, focusing on experimentation, focusing on a, an open space of exploring and listening. So the, idea, the, the ideas can come from the student, but they can be put into perspective by the, by the teacher who with his looks, his overall experience uh, can help him grow his first intuitions. That, I guess good technology is use, useful for this, for, for, for it's quite an, an instrument without history. And that's really maybe a good point. But I disagree. It's, a, it's no? an instrument with a lot of history. Uh, oftentimes, as I said, the, the sounds that they, that they offer, the patterns that they offer, oftentimes, not all of them, but oftentimes carry a long history of Western European uh, musical history. They shouldn't, yeah. I take the example of uh, what we are doing and we do not offer some sound banks or something. The sounds are made by the students. So we do, uh, that I was talking about a, a really free framework and for, for me, we do not have to, 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 to make apps that are already uh, colored in a, in a tradition, a musical tradition, or uh, they, they have only, it has to be only a framework. And for example, the, the, I was talking about the interface called Lightwall system that we develop. The, the, the system that the performers is changing sound depending on the position he has in, in, a wall, in a wall of light. So the sounds that are in it are, are the, the, actually the, the instrument is, is inexistent if the performance, um, the, it's only the performer that, that really make it alive. He brings his music, his, he brings his universe and for me, that is the point of technology to, to enhance one's culture. Well. Um, thanks for all those perspectives. Um, so you're all kind of advocating right now in this session for a very like holistic, like broad, like starting really from what is listening, what is sound like in, in music education. And there's a question in, in, in the chat uh, that um, kind of uh, asks, is from Antje Valentin, um, which would link to what you've been saying right now as in uh, ideas for teachers. Which approaches do you see to give teachers an idea to use digital media for creative processes is the question. But I would also relate it to what you have been discussing right now, this kind of like wider approach to, to music education. What, what would be your recommendations to, to give to teachers? Well, uh, Andrea, we, we, we have many, many models and many, many uh, tools depending on the program, because as I, as I said, I, I teach in three schools. So they're a little bit different. I mentioned about the group lab, which is a kind of uh, meeting point, and, uh, which is which is also quite important to keep it as a regular platform, as a regular arena, as a regular stage of meeting, because then you can use for different purposes. But when we talk about uh, about um, digital media, we can talk about Zoom, about equivalent of Zoom, about I don't know Jack Audio, the the software which gives you the opportunity to to play much better together than, than on Zoom. But also we, we show the students and the others uh, uh, when then you have to go to advanced setting, audio setting, and to 
switch off the background noise filtering and then to make a test you know we'll do it tomorrow be before the concert or group lab the first idea is to 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 listen to the silent sounds playing together for example because on this using these platforms uh, it's a kind of noise gate and and filtering and the the, the sound is going up and down it's mainly designed to for for conferences so for one speaker and the others are listening when we talk together then the, the problems get the, the the problem so so those are the advantages and the disadvantages of the of the digital technology in in each case you know so uh, that's the that's a point but in the same time since i'm i'm running uh, experimental contemporary modern art modules we are using those disadvantages as a as a as a as a values so that's the that's another problem working with noises working with with different things but when we deal really exactly with the basic form of education playing the instruments of course we are using digital software and hardware as an extension of our traditional uh, instrument and that's that's really great uh, advantage that we can use them all together we can build up different hybrid system we are using different extended system for recording for post-production for playing for mixing for dealing with many many instruments all together but the the point is very special because we are we are in pandemic time you know distributed we are not really physically together that's the that's a that's a really big change and that's why we have to be concentrated what is the what is the really advantage what is the really trap because in many cases we are in traps we we cannot move we are waiting or we are trying to to communicate and the communication is not the 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 complete it's not complete it's not we are collecting things we are collecting uh, objects elements but still something is missing what is missing the personal direct contact with humans between humans that's why we are on an equivalent stage now so that that's why uh, uh, we should be able to to turn and to switch our perspective our perception our way of communication in a more uh, sophisticated way that's the it, it needs a special setup and it needs special uh, concentration sometimes we need more time because that's the that's that's also missing time sometimes we need more time for uh, for some check for setup for staying together a little bit longer to check all details because all those are missing in many cases or just to get it as it is you know just to to see what so i i would like to, when you when you check tomorrow the the uh, long electroacoustic marathon group lab invites with different models mix up in a form of like five hours long event so that's the that's every year in the middle of of, of the festival on a thursday we start regular at six o'clock, so you, you 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 can check it out. Yes, uh, Andreas, your your audio is not on. Could you? Speak? Thank you. Yeah, click twice. Um, I would like to come back to the to the question that Antje Valentin asked us. Um, because I think it goes beyond the classroom in, in regular schools. Um, and she, she said, or she asked, um, what would you advise teachers to do? And uh, what I meant, or what I think is important is um, to, to find a very conscious way of uh, approaching digital media and their sound possibilities. If you look at something like the, the surface of a tablet, if it represents only the, um, the traditional notation or the traditional instrument, um, it may be, for instance, a help for people with special needs, which is good, but it might also limit the opportunities of artistic expression for other people. And uh, you have to consider what exactly do I want? Do I want to, for instance, include 
people with special needs? Uh, and do I take advantage of that reduced possibilities or do I want to open up new spaces? Um, if those are the alternatives, which could be discussed cr critically. Uh, if, if the surface of your tablets represents uh, graphic elements or wider possibilities, you might come into whole new spaces um, and of course, there are apps who are combining that. But anyway, th that's what I mean by whenever you go with digital media into some kind of educational context, you have to be careful of what exactly do I want with it? Does it really serve my purpose? Uh, does it open up creative possibilities? Or is it really reducing or is simply reproducing existing patterns for instance, in popular music, which where, where what it is oftentimes used for in, in German music classes. I think this leads to your uh, first question in, your, in the first round, Katinka, where you asked what kind of meaningful content can we create? What Andreas just said. So maybe you want to jump in. Yeah, I would like maybe to say that for, for, uh, the advice maybe for for your teachers is maybe to to focus on the artistic project and not on the tool because the tool is like only a part of the problem or I think the the focus yeah can have to be have to be the the, the encounter with the with the, the artists the musicians and their projects and their vision should have should be the the focus uh, yeah, I guess. I think this uh, already answers the question that Luciani put mm. here. Yeah. With digital instruments, what are we teaching? What are we learning? Music yeah. or the devices? I hear from the panel a very strong focus on music. <laughs> I think this, no, we, I, I think we don't have to probably discuss this. This was the kind of the topic that we've been touching on do you find maybe to elaborate a little bit do you find the like this focus on music rather than the devices easier with digital technologies because maybe they don't need so much time for kind of practicing as a piano is it for me or for for andres you, you can anyone can pick this for for me uh, for example in a, with kids with no musical knowledge it is really easier to to use digital because it is much more attractive but with in music schools or conservatories i find it much more difficult because technique or or score like marek said uh, is is uh, very often considered at, as the starting point of the, the instrumental learning and um, and i guess what i am proposing is not a question of opposing the methods but uh, to to learn uh, of course you have to learn an instrument and it's obviously a long path and whatever the approach is but um, the the complement I think the digital tools are a complementary act and and it is really quite a good entering point for for kids who want to play an instrument and uh, for the first the first encounter with the music school or with the conservatory um, it could be a great a great point to bounce back to the intuitive and the curious listening um, so yes i find it easier for non musician and much more complex for the musicians okay Thank you. But it's a point of view. Maybe Andrea says another one. Sure. Well, I can say, if I can, you know, that, that uh, we should use the technology as natural as we are using mm -hmm. other things around, you know, because the, the technology is quite natural part of our civilization and the, the, the development. So I think to deal and to, to compare the acoustic instrument with the equivalent as a digital instrument has no more sense, by my opinion, because it was the the kind of uh, competition, you know, in uh, in the sixties, in 
70s and especially in the moment when the when we opened the empty stage you know with electroacoustic music for example but nobody is surprised now any more longer with yeah. the, with the fact because that's another perspective now so uh, i i guess that uh, that uh, the our role as a teacher is to show the value and to show how to use them how to join them how to merge the the older with uh, and uh, and for me that's quite important to show also old technology because in many cases it's, there are a lot of uh, amazing values which are forgotten or they are lost in in fact and we think and we are focusing on the digital and the most top you know level which is not in fact the deal the deal as Katinka said is art the art is the deal and and yeah. and and the uh, and the, the personal involvement and really understanding. So to, to find a very uh, subjective uh, elements in, in all human activity is extremely important. We shouldn't, I, by my opinion, we shouldn't just create a model which will be common for everybody. Yeah. We should find uh, the priority in between. Sometimes just one element is, is the most important value comparing with the whole complex system. The result, the final result is important yeah. and how we deal with this and how we are communicating each other. That's the, that's the point and which is sometimes really missing, you know. We, you ask me to, to, to click my camera that I'm not visible or you... So this is the example, you know. You have the you have the, you have the broken uh, line, which is which is in fact the beautiful story when you are doing this by purpose. Okay, so the appearing and disappearing, you know, is also the deal. And when you start to talk with each other, so I look at you, I look at your face, and I know you at the in a few seconds. You know, this is the that's the point, and I can communicate. Sometimes you need more time. To get the, the to get the resonance, to get the the feedback, to get the mm. the really things which are common, and to, to build up the collective is another deal. I think it's it's in, quite important when we deal with the short term education with the long term education. That's a that's a really big difference, by my opinion. We are more concentrate on something or we can evaluate things step by step, you know. Yeah. And when we have the proposal for the hybrid classes, for example, you know what does it mean? When you have a big group of students, every week we have only few students meeting, direct meeting, and the next class we are choosing other groups. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work. That, believe me, it doesn't work because when one is missing or the two other are missing, you can't get it. You, so from that reason, I prefer just to meet online. It's more safe and I have much more better result, you know, that's, the, that's one model. But it's, it's really extremely now to, to, to find the, the equivalent of the, of the personal meeting with the other people online. So this is the digital technology we are using. We are looking at each other, we are listening, and sometimes we are hiding ourselves. So can you imagine how the concept online works? Listeners are drinking a coffee, they are talking, they are doing some other things. The concept is a little bit on the background, and, and that's, that's also fine. I think this is also the big change. We should be able to change it. They are checking those concepts afterwards. So the, the number of visitors, it's quite good, but then it's growing afterwards. But with one condition, you have to share. Of course, you have to, you have to, to keep this concert still uh, available, you know? So that's- Common that, practice that, in the 18th century that people were drinking and talking during concerts. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar, you know, I'm, I'm, under, I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the clubbing stuff, you know, to, to run a loud, noisy concert in a, in a clubs, underground concert, no problem, you know, but, but in the same time, in some other cases, we need a full concentration, we need the, the silence, we are playing black concerts, you know, like completely dark space, just to be um, concentrated on the sound trajectories, I'm, I can stop at any moment. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
sorry, because we have we are a little bit short on time okay. now, so okay. I, I I have to cut you short here, yeah, unfortunately. Yes, please do it. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for the, my pleasure um, oh. <laughs> for sharing. <laughs> Um, the thing is, we have to end in like, I think, maximum five minutes. And uh, we have a number of questions. One from Rayesh, who already appeared in the <laughs> on the panel. And we have an, another two from the chat. So I would suggest uh, we collect the questions. And then we do a, a final round with everyone. And, and you decide what you want to respond to. Is that OK? Or did you have anything from, yeah? Is that okay? Okay. Um, then Rajesh, do you want to po pose your question? Yeah, um, I just wanted a little bit of feedback from the panels about um, the, that there's a, especially Marek, you know, you have the experience of say traditional ways of making music to electroacoustic and now let's say using also digital technology that there are different ways of dealing with time in the process of making now music. Let's say how much time you spend on, let's say creating a composition or, or and how has that changed in your, in your experiences? You know, um, I remember Stockhausen spending one month for like about 30 seconds of music at one point, um, you know, going back. I mean, do you think that we still have that kind of, uh, attention span or has that been lost would, would anybody spend one month now for 30 seconds of music um, using digital technology using apps using all the all the tools we have now at our you know well i i have two answers One, um, Marek, okay can, Marek, can, can we collect the questions yes. and then do one round because otherwise it's going to get yeah is that okay I could remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah we just take a note. I also took a note. I can remind you. <laughs> um, we had also one question in the very early uh, part of the discussion that goes to Andreas. And this is about if your understanding of music, music pedagogy, and its demands change from the inside into your data, or did it kind of stay the same? And the perspective is more which is considering how to optimize the already existing approaches. Um, this was from Martin Donna. Yeah. And, and can you can yeah. we do a round? I just want to collect. And there was then uh, Julia said uh, she has one question from the Facebook chat. No, sorry, there, there was no question. Ah, okay. So far, the, no question. Okay. Otherwise, there are two comments in the chat which I would encourage you to read because I think it's maybe too, the time is too short to, you know, go into those. Um, yeah, I, I would say let's, let's take those two questions and, and, and a round of, um, of closing because, the, the, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and, and also you can include whatever you find uh, is yet you still want to say <laughs> in the final round. Um, so maybe we start with Marek because you were the you first asked uh, about the time. I remember. I still attention remember. span. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is quite quite nice question. It's, it's a short question and I can make a short answer. This is easy. So when you compare with the Stockhausen and the, the scale of time. Short, short time. answer. Probably. Yes. <laughs> This, the whole life I'm, I'm composing or creating project whole, whole my life. So, uh, or the, another uh, answer is when I need to create few seconds, I spend few seconds. That's it, because I'm 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 really familiar mainly with the live performances. So so and the intuition, which is uh, which is the method, and the experiment, which is the method. So so this is the the simple answer. Quite extreme. One answer is I'm 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 running this this mechanism all the time. So, so I cannot say that I spend specific time to get specific result, or I'm just spending exactly the same time. Not longer, not shorter. <laughs> and, and of course, in between. <laughs> <laughs> Andreas, do you want to respond to the question? 
Yeah, I think it becomes very clear during this discussion that um, it is not a question of what the instrument is or what the nature of the instrument is, or to come back to Rajesh, uh, how much time you spend on something. It is, the, the question is, uh, as Marek pointed out, is it serving an artistic goal, an aim? Is it serving artistic expression? Is it fostering creative processes? Or is it just reproducing something old? And oftentimes something, somebody commented in the, in the chat on the, the capitalistic nature of the market. Is it just reproducing market uh, mechanisms of uh, promoting Western values and at the same time making other values, other musical material disappear? That is the question. And that is also, the, that's the question for composers and teachers at the tertiary level. And it's also uh, a question that every teacher has to answer at some point. Um, so I think those are the questions we really, really have to focus on when we talk, mm -hmm. for instance, about digital media. Thank you, Andreas. This yeah. was already a very good uh, closing, <laughs> uh, kind of summarizing uh, closing remark. <laughs> and But I would like to give the opportunity to Katinka to share your uh, yeah, re really very briefly, closing I, remarks. I totally agree with Andreas and I, I think that the, uh, my, my, uh, my end of the speech will be that uh, these tools must offer maybe a new dynamic for, for students to be a more in a more responsible position in, in projects. Uh, and, and of course, maybe these tools also put some put back some magic in our schools, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I think this was a very like beautiful closing round. <laughs> And um, I thank you all, all three of you, for your uh, for sharing your experiences and thoughts on the topic. 